the perfect atmospheric music in a video game doesn't exist. Oh, the Water Temple. Easily a contender for the least favorite dungeon in the Zelda game by so many of the series fans. Sure. Nowadays, there are some cases for it actually being one of Ocarina of Time's better constructed dungeons, but I think everyone's bias against this section of the game from when they were kids is still super strong. Although, to be fair, I'd argue this isn't just Ocarina of Time's fault. I would argue that a lot of the games from the 8-bit and 16-bit era set a terrible precedent for water levels in video games. With both the nigh-impossible Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle level, and the leading cause for so many cases of youth onset anxiety, Sonic literally drowning. Sega, what the fuck? So, when we came into the 3D space, we thought surely these problems would be fixed. Oh hell no. You have Banjo-Kazooie, Tomb Raider 2, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, hell, even Kingdom Hearts 2 couldn't pull off a good water level, and that game kicks ass on just about every other front. And of course, this isn't even mentioning the godfather of all underwater nightmares that is Jolly Roger Bay from Mario 64 in this goddamned eel. Now, the one thing that most of these levels have in common, apart from the changing of a usually enjoyable control scheme into one where it feels like you're actively fighting the controller to move, terrible cameras, and did I mention the eel? No, one positive note that most of these levels share is amazing music to accompany them. Does this lessen the blow of everything else about these games going out the window? Well, a little. But songs like Aquatic Ambiance from Donkey Kong Country, Rusty Bucket Bay from Banjo-Kazooie, Inside the Crashed Space Frigate from Metroid Prime, and of course, Dire Dire Docks. Ooh, baby. And when those drums kick in? Uh. But how does the music in Ocarina of Time's infamous water dungeon stack up to the rest of these fantastic songs? Surprisingly well, actually. I'll be honest, before doing research for this video, if you put a gun to my head and said, tell me what the music in the water temple sounds like, I, well, you'd probably be cleaning my blood off the carpet. But going back to listen to it, there's actually a lot of depth here compared to the other dungeon melodies in this game. And the way the music weaves themes of both aquatic ambiance and various Eastern and Middle Eastern religions and cultures, which tie into the architecture of the temple, is very impressive. And after the somewhat poor retool of the Fire Temple we covered in the last video, it's really nice to see Koji Kondo back at the top of his game. So let's break it down. First off, a real quick shout out to Dalek Khan for putting together the sheet music for the Water Temple on MuseScore.com. It's nice to once again have a visual aid for this video as I go through the music. And once again, I will do my method of breaking down the instruments and sections used to create the song. Starting off, it seems like we have a return of the beloved glass harmonica we saw in the Forest Temple's background music, providing a nice, solid hum sound to the temple and creating a solid bass for the chords to form. This instrument is played throughout the entire song. And actually, if you remember in the last episode how I mentioned that Koji Kondo loves using sampling, this section itself is a sample. It seems that he got this file and just altered the pitch for whatever note he was trying to achieve. In fact, it's pretty possible that this is the same sample he used to make the glass harmonica sounds in the forest temple. Secondly, the song also starts with a beautiful trickling of water sound. This is a melody that lasts four bars and repeats throughout the entire song. The first two bars are the same, and the last two bars are the same. The difference being that the second two bars add a flat on the first, the fourth, and the sixth eighth note. Accompanying this sound is the occasional set of chimes. This adds a more mysterious and somber tone to the temple, and is made all the more impressive because it too persists across the entire piece. But there's something else super peculiar about this part of the song. 
Does this trickling of water sound familiar at all? What if we slow it down a little bit? Sound familiar? Seriously, this blew my mind. And a huge shout out is in order to Metalizer for reaching out to me on Discord and giving me this info. This seriously made my day. But yeah, it seems that Koji Kondo used the same piece he had for the bone rattling sound in the forest temple to create this trickling of water sound in the water temple. It's damn brilliant. The next instrument to be featured in the song is a sort of Eastern flute. Honestly, I spent a few hours listening to various flutes online to try and pinpoint the exact kind used. And I found a video that seemed to point to it being a bamboo flute, but then the people in the comments were saying, she's not playing the bamboo flute, that sounds like a small band Surrey flute. I don't know why I gave him that voice, but this does seem to be more correct. And a lot of different flute styles found in the East play sections similar to that found in the Water Temple's theme, playing over the same short melody quickly and then adding in some changes for some extra flair. This again adds a sense of mystery and more Eastern influence to the temple. And finally, we have some strings. They also come in to add some eastern flair to the song, and if I had to place it, I'd say it's probably something like an oud. Or a kanun from Middle Eastern cultures. But let's talk about how all this plays in together with the design of the temple. You're probably getting tired of hearing me say this, but there are some solid influences from both eastern and Middle Eastern cultures in the music but there is also Eastern and Middle Eastern influences with the architecture featured in the dungeon. In the original version of the game, there are a bunch of dragon statues that Link can hookshot to, and yet another in the dungeon's whirlpool room. Now, obviously we all know how much dragons factor into a lot of cultures around the world, but in China in particular, dragons were believed to have control over rainfall, typhoons, and floods, making it pretty fitting to find them in a water temple. I'd also argue that the design of these dragons is similar to that of traditional eastern dragons. Funnily enough, while researching this topic, I found out the only major difference between Chinese and Japanese dragons is the number of toes they have. Yeah. Now, in the remastered version for the 3DS, they gave this dungeon a ton of TLC. I mean, they spent more time making it look nice than you spent in the menu screen taking on and off your iron boots in the original version they really hammer down on a lot of Eastern influence, which I think adds more credence to the song. It's hard to not see references to Eastern temples in particular. The lanterns hanging in the main room are clear references to lanterns found in the Middle East. And there are these reticulated patterns that can be found in both Chinese architecture and arabesque latticework. And the boss room in particular is a slam dunk of Eastern influence. Not only do we have what are unmistakably Chinese dragons on the walls, but the ceiling is just oozing with architectural references from both China and Japan. The boss room in particular is a stunning example of some of the upgrades this game made in comparison to the original release. And this is an interesting situation, because I'm legitimately not sure if the updates they made for the remaster were just adding details they wished they could have added in the original release, but were cut because they were limited by the hardware of the N64, or if these changes were influenced by the design of the music already found in the temple. Either way, I think the Water Temple's theme is perfectly matched for the environment it appears in. But what do you think? Tell us about it in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more content from us. Also, we have a Twitch channel where we do a weekly talk show on the current gaming news, as well as a Discord where you can chat with us about anything you'd like. 
And if you are able to toss us a few bucks, we have a Patreon as well, where you will get some exclusive content, including our newest bonus episode, where we talked about the top 25 greatest moments in video games. But either way, thank you again for watching, and until next time, have a wonderful day.